Hey everybody, this is Marcus from Meguiar's. Today we're excited to talk to you about a line of products that are near and dear to our hearts, and that is the Detailer line. Uh, this is a line of products that has actually really been a staple for many detailers for decades. Uh, these products are products that are used by mobile detailers, people running detail shops, uh, dealerships, even OEMs. And the reason that these are used so often is because they're very effective and they come in a concentrated format. So it allows people to run a profitable business. Uh, today we're actually going to show you something really exciting, which is we have taken these professional formulas that so many people rely on and put them in a ready to use format, which means essentially you can now go get a bottle of any one of these four products and it's already pre-diluted so you don't need to be worrying about diluting out the formula you can simply pick it up at your local parts store and get right to work so whether you're a professional account who's maybe run out of product in the middle of a job and need something in a pinch or if you're a weekend warrior you're an enthusiast maybe you're just detailing a few neighbors cars here and there and you're not quite ready to commit to a full gallon or five gallons of product this is an excellent way to try out these products. So today we're actually going to show you all of the nuances of each of these products and how you can get the best possible results in the least amount of time. Now let's move over to the car and show you some tips and tricks for each of these products. As a general best practice, it's a good idea to start off by cleaning the wheels and tires before you wash the rest of the vehicle. Today we want to specifically show you about D143 non-acid wheel and tire cleaner and kind of the unique attributes about this product. I mean, one of the first things you're probably asking is, well, what is a non-acid wheel cleaner? And it's a great question. What that basically means is that it's an alkaline-based wheel cleaner. And the reason that you would want to use a product like that is there's a, a few advantages. One is you can also clean the tires with the same product. So anybody looking to save time or even just frankly simplify your process, uh, you can do that by using a product like this. Uh, the other thing is it's very uh, efficient and effective on many wheel types. Uh, commonly most new cars come with a factory clear coated finish uh, or a painted type wheel with a clear coat and this will be safe and effective on those. You can also use this on a chrome wheel. You're really just going to want to avoid using this on anything that is uncoated. Uh, generally speaking, that will be an uncoated aluminum wheel, uh, as well as a few other aftermarket wheels that are out there. Now, the other thing about using an alkaline wheel is a uh, wheel cleaner is you want to start by rinsing the entire wheel and tire first. When you pre-rinse, you're doing a few things. One, you will knock off some of the material, uh, some of the loose debris and the grime. Uh, and two, it is part of the process that we want to somewhat dilute the product so that it is safe when it's sitting and dwelling on that wheel for some time. Now, the other thing that we want to pay attention to is what are you going to use to clean your wheel and tire uh, mechanically along with that product? So a couple things. One, you have a stiff or a medium bristle brush, nylon type brush. That's very effective for cleaning the tire. You don't want to use that on the wheel as it can scratch, but you will use that to agitate after putting the non-acid wheel and tire cleaner on there. Now, in addition to that, you have a uh, softer wheel brush where generally it's either a, a kind of a, a softer material or it's split on the end so it's not going to scratch the wheel face. And you will use that to agitate and get in the nooks and crannies on the face of the wheel. And then lastly, the other thing you're going to want to use is a specialized brush that is intended to get back into uh, behind the spokes so that you can get the barrel of the wheel. Now, that's something that's kind of a nice little pro tip there. If you really want to take your wheel clean to the next level, you want to make sure that the entire wheel, not just the front of it, is nice and clean. So now we want to start by rinsing that surface. So after rinsing, then you're gonna apply the non-acid wheel and tire cleaner. Now I'll generally start with the tires. And you can see almost immediately that you're gonna get some browning. And that is an indication that you are cleaning some of the gunk that is on that uh, tire. And then you're gonna go on to the wheel as well. Make a point of also kind of spraying uh, at different angles. So you hit all the faces and surfaces of the wheel. And then also, you're gonna to wanna to spray some of the uh, wheel cleaner into the barrel to get all that brake dust and grime that's back in there. Then 
Then we'll want to switch to the soft face brush for the wheel. Now the product is designed to be a combination of both some mechanical cleaning, in other words, using a brush, as well as some chemical cleaning. That allows you to avoid using overly harsh chemicals or things that are gonna be more likely to damage uh, a slightly more sensitive wheel surface. So then after using your soft face brush, then you can switch to the specialized brush so you can get into the barrel of the wheel and really take your job to the next level. On a neglected wheel, if this has never been done, it's possible that you might even have to do this uh, a couple of times because some of this grime could be in there for years. And now you're gonna to wanna to rinse everything off. So there you have it. You can see how D143 non-acid wheel and tire cleaner can very quickly and effectively clean up a very filthy wheel and tire. Another great product in the ready to use line is the D107 Citrus Power Cleaner Plus. Uh, this is essentially uh, an all-purpose cleaner or a, a cleaner that you can use on several different surfaces for several different types of jobs. Uh, in this particular product, in the ready-to-use format, this is pre-diluted at a four-to-one ratio. So that means that you wouldn't use this on leather in the interior, but you can use this for interior upholstery. You can use it for carpet, rubber floor mats. Uh, it's also very good uh, to clean tires and also wheel wells or engine bays. So it's extremely versatile and you can really use it on a lot of different surfaces. Now we've already cleaned the wheel and tires, so in this case we wouldn't want to clean the tire, but we do have quite a bit of dirt and grime that's up in the wheel well. So what you can do is take this product and spray it up in there. And then you're generally going to want to use some type of a specialized brush that allows you the, a reach to be able to get into the fender liner and be able to scrub in that area. Then after you physically agitated it, then you can rinse that area out. Now, in addition to this, again, this is a great product for doing cleaning in other, other areas, such as your interior. Just make sure that after you've used this product, that you're gonna rinse it off or wipe away any remaining residue. Now, one of the most exciting and unique formulas in the ready-to-use lineup from Detailer is actually D2002 Iron Removing Spray Clay. Now, I know you're probably wondering what exactly does that mean? There's kind of a lot going on there. So I wanted to kind of explain why this is something that makes a lot of sense for really all types of users, whether you're a professional, a weekend warrior, an enthusiast, or just somebody that really wants their car to look its best. Now, what you would use this for and what professionals have used products like this for for many years is to remove contamination that's embedded into or on top of the paint. Uh, normal washing and drying won't always remove all the contamination you might have on the paint. So this allows you chemically to safely get down into the paint itself and remove iron-based or ferrous-based uh, contamination. Now, you're saying, where in the world does that come from? Why would that be on my car in the first place? Well, the answer is, Brake pads, for one, brake rotors and brake pads can spew off a lot of iron-based particles. That ends up on the roads, in the air, which then settles on paint. It's also uh, part of an industrial fallout issue where sometimes this is in the air settling on paint. So there's a lot of different ways it can end up on the paint. But at the end of the day, you need to find a way to get it off. Now, some of you are probably familiar with using a clay bar or a clay mitt type process. Now, we of course have both a mild and aggressive clay bar, and that's great and very effective at removing above surface contamination. But where this product takes a little bit further than traditional clay is that you're allowed to chemically go into the paint a little bit further and remove things that a clay bar may not have fully removed. Now you'll notice that the product itself is clear when it's first sprayed on. And as it reacts with the iron particles, it will actually change colors to somewhat of a purple, almost a wine color. And that's how you know that it's reacting with that iron particle. So you can see in some cases it will start turning 
almost immediately. In other cases, depending on the type of contamination or how severe it is, it may take up to two or three minutes. Really the key is to just make sure that the product is not fully dry on the surface. If you see that it's starting to dry, you can either spray a little bit more product on, or you can agitate it with your damp wash mitt and spread the product around. You can see some of these particles, again, already starting to kind of bleed, if you will, on the surface. So I would want to let this sit for a good uh, two or so minutes, two to three minutes, and make sure that it fully gets down there before I spread it with the wash mitt. So now that this has dwelled for a couple of minutes, uh, you can take your wash mitt and I'll show you, you know, how you can spread it around. You'll see how the purple goes away. And what you're basically doing here is if there were some really significant or deep particles that were down into the surface, you're re-exposing it to more of that product. So there's still some of that iron removing spray clay on the surface. The next thing you wanna do is rinse off the remaining residue and inspect the paint and see if it's fully decontaminated. The other thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is check your work. Now, you can take a, a piece of like a plastic bag, a lunch bag, or a piece of cellophane tape pla type plastic like this, and use either a quick detailer or some of the iron removing spray clay. You'll spray that on the surface, make sure it's nice and wet, and then you can either place your hand in the bag or behind that plastic and rub it on the surface. Believe it or not, you will actually magnify the bumps and you'll feel them if there's still something there. So you may not be able to see it or your bare hand may think that it's smooth. This allows you to really double check and make sure, hey, I got everything before I move on to the next step of either compounding, polishing, and or putting on a wax, sealant, or coating. In this case, it's nice and smooth, so that means I know that I've removed all that contamination and I can move on. If I felt bumps through the plastic, then I would apply more of this product as well as and or use the clay bar to go back over that surface before proceeding to compounding, polishing, or waxing. If ever there was a product in the detailer line that had a cult-like following, it's hyperdressing. D170 hyperdressing is a fan favorite for a lot of reasons. One of those is the fact that it's so versatile. Uh, being a water-based dressing, that means that the users in the professional channel are able to dilute this for different jobs and different uses. Here we've got it at one to one, which is the most popular dilution ratio, and it's really fantastic to use in several areas. You could use this inside a wheel liner to make it nice and dark again and really showcase your wheel and tire package. You could use this in an engine bay, and one of the things that's really unique about it is it almost has this magic-like property where once you spray it out, you don't have to individually wipe it in all the nooks and crannies and crevices. It tends to spread on its own and leave a nice, even finish. Uh, really makes it look brand new in the engine bay. Uh, those same properties also apply to the interior. Uh, a lot of folks will use this on door panels. Uh, you can use it on vinyl seats as well. And then of course on the exterior, you know, if you have an unpainted trim or plastic or rubber, this is fantastic for that. Now one of the most popular applications for hyperdressing is for tires. Now there's a few different ways you can apply it. If you have, a, let's say, a larger sidewall and you've got an off-road truck, a lot of people will spray it straight onto the tire and maybe use a tire brush to kind of work it and spread it out a little bit. And then it, of course, will also spread into those nook and, nooks and crannies really well on its own. Now for a, a lower profile tire like this, then you can take the product, spray some onto an applicator, and then just simply spread it around the tire. What, what we generally recommend would be that you spread it around a few times, make sure you have some even coverage, and then let the product dwell for a few minutes, maybe five to 10 minutes, and then go back over it one more time, just in case you had any drips or runs, just to reduce the chance of getting any kind of splatter or fling on your vehicle. Now on the exterior of the vehicle, other than this, don't forget it's fantastic in a wheel well liner to make that look really nice and fresh, and it really highlights and focuses in on the wheel and tire package, especially if you have some nice aftermarket wheels and tires.
Well, there you have it. We hope you really enjoyed this deep dive into these four exciting new ready to use products. If you'd like to pick them up and check them out for yourself, head down to your local auto parts store. If you have any more questions or comments, we'd love to hear from you guys. Be sure to leave those below. Thanks so much.